Hi, this is Andy Scarborough with Crown Works. I want to talk about jealousy today. I know it's such a gross one, right? Oh, it's kind of an icky word even to, um, to say, isn't it? There's so much that comes in with it, right? Like there's the FOMO, there's the comparison trap, and definitely the analysis paralysis of trying to figure out how somebody else got what you thought was yours, if somebody got there first, if there's enough to go around, all of those thoughts are totally paralyzing. And that's where jealousy becomes what I call the green squeeze because jealousy shows up in some really interesting and kind of insidious ways. You know, it's real funny to like hashtag FOMO, but that fear of missing out and comparison are all forms that jealousy takes and fear is really the root behind them. So jealousy is really a problem of withholding right? We are so afraid that there's a shortage of good things in the world, right? Like good hair and good bodies and good salons and good boyfriends and good Instagram feed. Because if you go around thinking that there's not enough good colorist in the world, what are the chances that you're really going to count yourself among them? And if you feel like you're never going to get to that place, then suddenly you're insanely jealous of everybody else you perceive to be there already. Jealousy is actually a paralyzing trap and that's why I call it the green squeeze. It stops you from doing anything and it's amazing the links that we'll go to to argue for those limiting beliefs. So in psychology there's a concept called projections and projections are really when we take whatever our experience is and say that someone else is doing it, right? Because it's safer to experience that outside of ourselves. For instance, the guy who drives like an asshole that you just cut off, right? Well, actually, like you're the one that's driving like an asshole, which is why that's what came out of your mouth. Um, and sometimes it's really easy to track that way. And sometimes it's not. And the trickier part of this is when it comes to positive projections. And when I was studying spiritual psychology, this was a concept that blew my mind. So positive projections sounds so strange, but just like someone might attach a negative observation to someone outside themselves because it's safer, we often do the same thing with positive attributes right? Someone who eats really clean or is really fit is something that, you know, you just can't do. And it feels safer to have that story because that's how the ego sort of keeps you in check. For instance, it's been a story of mine my whole life that I am not athletic. I mean, listen, like not only was I not the kid picked in gym class, but like I was writing political protest letters about PE, I think by like fourth grade. Um, so I had this story that that just wasn't something that I could do. And one of my business partners is wildly fit. Like this girl is just, she's amazing. So because I had that story, then I would look at people with great bodies and it wasn't like I was angry jealous about it, but I just felt like that wasn't something I could ever have. Because the truth is, there's some part of you that's still arguing for whatever that limitation is because it's serving you somehow. For me, I hate to sweat. I hate to sweat and I really like cookies. And so there was a story about me not being very athletic because it kept me from being accountable to myself for taking the action needed to do that thing. Julia Cameron says in The Artist Way that jealousy is a map and I have never heard a truer thing because it really is. Jealousy is a signpost to whatever story is still active or alive in you or whatever limiting belief you're still arguing for. So the question is, are you willing to give up that story and make a change to get the thing that you want? 
if I'm totally honest, there's definitely a green squeeze that comes up for me when I see younger or newer stylists in my salon having two or three hour breaks in their day. And in that time, they like whip out a doll head or work on each other and do the most insanely creative stuff. And it's not like I'm actively like hating on them while they're doing it, but I'm looking at it going, well, man, it would be nice if, or, you know, that's a luxury that I just don't have that kind of time. And I mean, the honest part is I, I do. I choose not to use it for that. I would rather spend a few hours of my time, you know, watching a TV marathon or, um, napping or doing these videos but if I really want that kind of creative indulgence that kind of time then I have to sacrifice something for it and part of what I have to sacrifice is the story that I can't in my last video we talked about boundaries and really changing out that I can't internal dialogue for I'm not willing to and when it comes to jealousy, that's a really, really tough one. If I'm jealous of someone's fit body or their creative color clientele, there are sacrifices that I'm gonna need to make. There are changes that I'm gonna need to make. And the safer part of it is to project a capability onto them, whether it's skill or time or genetics, that somehow isn't in my realm of possibility to possess. And that is a lie. So jealousy is such a gift because jealousy is one of the ways that you get to see where your ego is lying to you to keep you safe and to keep you playing small because it's scary to put that stuff down and really like swap some stuff around in your life or your day and disrupt the whole comfortable flow of your life in order to get this thing that maybe you've spent your lifetime telling yourself that you just can't have. The truth is that jealousy is a mask for fear and it's a really, really clever mask. And a lot of times it's been a mask that we've been wearing a long time. You know, that whole story about me being a kid and not being very athletic was rooted in that I, I had a couple really bad accidents because I was a clumsy kid. And so the idea of going fast on bicycles or, you know, snowboarding or something like that really scares me, like on a physical primal level. So to protect myself from that, the ego has built this really careful and layer upon layer construct of what I just can't do. And so as a result, I find myself watching some of my closest friends like up on mountain high here, like hurtling themselves down a, a cliff. And the first thing I think is, oh man, I wish I could do that. And the second thing I think is, that looks really scary. And the second is probably the more true. Maybe it seems really scary for you in the example of having some creative downtime to ask for that in your life. If you feel like you already work a bunch and asking for another few hours to creatively play on a weekend is a big thing to ask from your family or partner or kids, then that can be just as scary as me watching people hurtle down a mountain. It's fear, you guys, it's fear. It's actually not capability. It's, it's capability and it's desire cloaked in a really well-layered outfit of fear and stories and limiting beliefs about there not being enough. So in Julia Cameron's The Artist Way, she gives this amazing, concise little formula that she calls the action anecdote. Now, in some of my studies, I've found lots of other ways to get there, and however you get there is fine, but it's really three questions, right? Who is it that I'm jealous of? Why am I jealous? And what action can I take? Now, there was a really interesting example of how this process worked out for me. 
um, Instagram and social media is a great like breeding ground for jealousy and comparison and competition. And there was another salon that I was looking at um, whose brand seemed really concise and they were doing a lot of the things that I want our team to do. And I found myself like really triggered and, and kind of having like, I mean, if I'm honest, like sort of some ugly thoughts about these beautiful people doing this magnificent work. And I caught myself and I checked myself and I was like, all right, we're gonna unpack this right here and now because this does not feel good. So I thought, okay, I don't know these people. Like I'm, I, I wouldn't know them from Adam and Eve. So what is it about this that's really triggering me? And when I looked at it, I thought, okay, this is about how unified their team is. So what is it that I'm not doing or I'm not willing to do to have the same results? And when I looked at some of the mechanics of our management and our salon team, I thought, oh, all right, well, we just need to get our vision a little bit more streamlined. Okay, so what does that look like? That probably looks like more meetings. And immediately I had this like, ugh, but I don't want to. And I thought, oh, that's it, right? That's pay dirt, that's the money. When you find that point of resistance, that's it. Like that's where ego has built in the trap for you to try to trigger you back to whatever story was serving you and not doing it in the first place. So I thought, okay, fuck, like it's more meetings. It's, it's more of my time, which is, for me, my most precious commodity and something I get really, really stingy with. So if I am, if I'm really wanting, if, if part of me is so in desire of this thing that I'm seeing out there, that I'm having this kind of negative emotional response in jealousy or in upset, then it must mean that that's something that's worth changing something to do. And I can't think of a better use of my time and a sacrifice of an old story. So we put some meetings on the book and we did a vision board with the team and really got aligned. And yeah, it, it definitely cost me some time, you know, hanging out with my dogs or doing whatever else I wanted to do. But that feeling totally dissolved. And in fact, as soon as I identified the action that I needed to take in order to get that thing that I wanted, all of those negative feelings, that like gross, jealous knot in your belly, you know what I'm talking about, that like stick in your throat, all of that, just dissolved. And that's when you know you're on the right track. It's actually a beautiful way that our souls and minds and hearts work that upset comes as an indicator, like a flag, like another signpost, that there is some choice that we're making that is not in alignment with everything else that we want. So that action anecdote was such a clear way and it's something that I run through in my mind anytime I'm in some kind of upset about jealousy. Who is this really? And what is it about them? And what action am I willing to take to get that? What story am I really willing to sacrifice once and for all? Is there a chance if I go snowboard that I'm gonna go tumbling down the mountain? Absolutely. Is that a story that I'm willing to sacrifice? Not yet, but I'm aware of it. And I feel like that's a big piece to give yourself credit for. And in all of this work, it's so, so important for you to take your time and be gentle with um, what you're really willing to do. Am I willing to bring my lunches to the shop to um, get my diet a little bit more in alignment with this person who's exhibiting such great discipline in that regard? Absolutely. Um, but I have to go slow with it because really when we're looking at making these kind of changes, 
in those deep, I mean, a lot of these are like deep childhood stories, deep patterns that we've been running for a long time. Um, we kind of have to look at like you would, like you would weight loss, right? So if you're gonna do some fad diet and lose a bunch of weight fast, you're probably not gonna keep it off. The way to make lasting change is to move gradually and be gentle with yourself while you're doing it. And if there's one day that you can't do it or you have some of those old feelings come back, it's all right, like let yourself off the hook for that. In the example of that creative free time for me, there are some weeks where those few hours that I try to block out for myself get eaten up with, you know, paying bills or getting a car wash or something like that. And that's okay because now I recognize that that's what I'm doing. And just like when you're on a diet, you know, if you slip up and have a Snickers bar, it's all right. It doesn't mean that you're that you're throwing your whole plan out the window, but it does mean that it's a little bit of a setback and you just have to be aware that that's the choice that you're making at that time. So who knew that jealousy was such a gift and really like a roadmap to exactly the things that you most want? but it requires some bravery and maybe some changes in lifestyle, some changes in the stories we tell ourselves about what we're able to do versus what we're willing to do, and some different choices. And just remember, even when you refuse to make a change, you still have made a choice. So the next time someone makes you insanely jealous and you find yourself like inside the green squeeze, tell them thank you. I mean, maybe not to their face because that would be weird, but thank them because they just showed you the direct path to getting what you want. So if you found some value in this conversation today, please like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at crown underscore works, hashtag crown works. See you around.